let's see if I get this right Did you ever took pictures, Zerka? Pictures. Uh, did you use uh, uh, cameras or not? You never used cameras to take oh, pictures. Yeah, made pictures of course. yeah, you did. Motion pictures, certainly we did. Started in the forties. It was. I'm assuming that it was simpler at that time. There is a very no right. It was very unusual, and um, we had the first sound camera that was available at the time. Well, now I think it's working. Let me see if it works. Let me let me make a, a, a test here, uh, just to check if it's working. Uh, no, Zerka, what I, I would like to ask you, actually, is uh, the following. I, I was looking at the, the psychodrama, third volume. I, and need, to, I need to do something with this water. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a little stool in the... Yeah, so uh, let, let, let me take it. <laughs> with this. No, no, he's bringing, he's bringing the stool for me to put oh. the Okay. Yeah, this is a little bit... Uh, it's better. Yeah? Fine. It will... Yeah. Um, no, just the color red. <laughs> I coupled up myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. The... No, what I was... Uh, uh, um trying to tell you I was uh, looking at the 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 third volume of psychodrama and then I found uh, I I was not able to read before then I found uh, a small publication uh, called psychodramatic rules techniques and adjunctive methods right. that I I thought that it would, it's, it's a quite uh, 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 simple uh -huh. way of uh, introducing okay. psychodrama for people who, who don't know and because uh, our people are not necessarily familiar with that, uh, so I thought about uh, uh, going through a little bit the rules and, and uh, the, the techniques and ask you a little bit uh, about that, and if we if we can show something, uh, we can no. do that. Uh, 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 no. So this is then when I I I, I took this. Uh, um, how do I call this? Uh, it's not a book. It's a booklet. We call it a monograph. A monograph. Then I realized that in the third volume of uh, psychodrama, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's there. But in any case. What, what, uh, one of the things that I, I, I can see uh, regarding the rules, for instance, is that the first rule says the subject acts out his conflicts instead of talking about them. All right. Well, this ne doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we should be talking about or, or showing conflicts. It can be something else. It can be... Anything that the subject is, is concerned about. Mm -hmm. It could be relations to people, relations to the universe, relations to God, relations to work, um, relations to his family members, it can be anything. I mean, don't forget that we started out as a form of therapy, so obviously the, the people were people who presented their problems. Mm -hmm. So whatever concerns you, whatever is important to you that you need to work on, and it is strictly, for most people, voluntary. Yeah. They have to come and admit, I'm having a problem with my husband, I, I can't mm -hmm. stand my own son, whatever. So 
it's up to the director to elicit from the protagonist the area of concern. And instead of telling, they reenact. So one of the difference uh, when we compare with psychoanalysis, where the, the, the person just talks. So the psychodrama is about acting out, not only talking. It's drama. It's drama. Of the mind and the body. Action. In action. Second rule, the subject acts in the here and now. Yes, that's interesting. We don't let them talk about the past because then it becomes a story. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, I, that wrong. I was six years old, I say, no, you are now six years old. So the past, present, and the future are always represented in the present tense. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. different to be six years old or to talk about being six years old. Yeah, so now I am 60. Six year yes, old, make so, short. Right. and I'm 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 playing okay. marbles. marbles. Right, I'm playing. You're marbles. enjoying yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> you don't want to go in for dinner. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> right. So this is the the second one. The third rule: the subject must act out his truth or her truth with all his subjectivity. Correct. Like you, you're just sitting down on your knees. Your body's different when you're sitting down as a little mm -hmm. boy playing. Absolutely. And you're playing with the marble. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's missing here is your friend with whom you are playing marbles. Absolutely, but he is but there. He is there. there. We, and if we want uh, to bring uh, him, the camera here, cannot uh, see, him. see him, but uh, we can. See him. I, I can. I can see him, Zazinho. And if yeah. we would need it to see him. We would have an auxiliary ego that's a, a therapeutic actor taking his role, taking his part, and playing marbles with you. Yeah, good. Fourth uh, rule, the patient, well, or no the subject... We talked about patient, now we talk about subject. The subject is encouraged to maximize all expression, action, and verbal communication rather than to reduce it. Yeah. So here you are playing marbles. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you didn't tell your friend mm -hmm. when you were playing marbles? For instance, one of the things you didn't tell her is how much you loved him. How Absolutely. And how much fun it was. Do it in your own words. You're playing marbles? Yes. And now tell him. You know, I, I think that I play well marbles, but you excel on that. I, I know that. I, I never said that before. But now I can tell you. Uh, you beat him at his game. <laughs> That's not yeah. easy to do. You are, you are really excellent. You are really excellent, Zazinho, on that. Uh, good. Um, the fifth rule, the warming up process proceeds from the periphery to the center. The warming up process. You know, when athletes begin to, before they actually do running or jumping, they, they stretch their muscles, they do mm -hmm. exercises. But this is a warming up to what you really want to work on. Yeah. This is not, although it imp was important to you then, now it's not as significant as, as for instance, your work situation. Mm -hmm. Or the fact that you're distant from your family. Yeah. So we begin with the ex ex wherever the protagonist is comfortable at the edge and slowly move towards the center. Yeah. For instance, now we started as uh, uh, myself playing marbles and uh, this can be seen as a, a sort of warm up. Correct. It's not a sort of, it's, it is a warm up. It is. So uh, proceeding from the periphery to the center. Concern, about the concern. Mm -hmm. What we're most, con most involved in eventually is the, con the, cent the central concern of the protagonist. Yeah, fine. For instance, in large mental hospitals with patients who were leaving, the central concern was, how will I feel outside this hospital? And you don't have much time for a warm-up. You have to go right in because the warm-up has already been established before they came. They're worried about going home. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, you had a long warm-up to coming here. You had to make preparations. You had to contact me. You had to, to make first. You had to make up your mind whether you were going, when it was possible to go. Then you had to make all the other arrangements. That's also warming up. We don't realize that we many many times in life we are warming up to an essential scene or series of scenes or relationship. Mm -hmm. It happens in steps. Fine. Yeah. Rule number six, the protagonist will pick the time, the place, the scene, the auxiliary ego he or she requires in the production of his psychodrama. Right. Now, what we didn't do here, first of all, we didn't have an auxiliary ego, but you imagine the auxiliary ego. We also, we knew you were playing outside. We knew it was daytime. We knew you were playing marble. Mm -hmm. What we didn't do was do the setting, for instance, are there houses here? Is this uh, a garden? Now I'm sure there was a garden. You said yeah, it's a, backyard. That, it's, a, it's a backyard. We set the backyard. We, yeah, set, we set the backyard yeah, when we did that. To help you warm up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we, we are referring uh, to something that we did in right. the other room. Right. Fine. What uh, I might have done is, is it springtime? Is it summer? Is it hot? Is it cool? Is a special smell from the kitchen or from the trees or the flowers. In other words, you can refine the setting. Mm -hmm. When somebody talks about their home, for instance, I go into what, where are you, what room of the house? How big is it? Do you like this one? What color are the walls? Where are the windows? Are there windows? What do you see when you look through the windows? Mm -hmm. What's on the floor? Are there books here? What else is in this room? In other words, it goes very specifically. But that's when people are doing their psychodrama. You can do it as specifically as you want to. It might be outdoors. It mm -hmm. might just be hiking and stumbling over a rock or something and hurting themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The seventh rule says psychodrama is just as much a method of restraint as it is a method of expression. That's important because people think that, oh, it's all letting go and being wild. And there's nothing like that. Very often, patients need to learn inner restraint against aggress aggressiveness, mm -hmm. against withdrawing. And that also is explored. What, what are you feeling when you're, when you're withdrawing? What's going on like, like I did in a scene with you with a person? What is that person feeling when they're withdrawn? You know they're withdrawn, but you're trying to reach them. So it's not you, perhaps not you are withdrawn, but the other person, and you have to deal with that. Or aggression, we have to often to build in stops, to put them into a situation where they want to be aggressive, and stop mm -hmm. in the middle of, of warming up. So restraints. That's also true in education. For instance, turning a child into the teacher is actually a method of dramatic restraint because the teacher doesn't behave the way the child does. Mm -hmm. So that the protagonist is learning different behavior yeah. that relates better to the group. Mm -hmm. Now the eighth uh, uh, rule says that the, the patient, the, the subject, is permitted to be as unspontaneous or inexpressive as he or she is at this time. Yeah. So if I'm not spontaneous, let it be unspontaneous. Okay. Are you spontaneous now, Zerka? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> spontaneous in the sense that this situation has never happened yet. yet. So this is new. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to be spontaneous in a new situation than in an old one. That's the art of spontaneity, bringing novelty, freshness, and creativity into an old situation. Mm -hmm. That is what we really are, we are demanded to do during the day, because certain things are already, we know already what's going to happen, or we, we think we know. Um, by that I mean, we, you don't force the patient to be more expressive, you gently guide them. If they're mute, you may ask, how's your body feel? Mm -hmm. 
what's in your, what, what's the weight in you, where's the weight in your body? In other words, we do encourage them, but we recognize that they're, they're sitting like this, right? And I could say, well, that's an interesting hand you have. Can you open it? Uh, mm -hmm. And as you gently nudge them into, but you begin with respecting where they are. Well, the rule number nine, interpretation and insight giving in psychodrama is of a different nature from the verbal types of psychotherapy. Correct. What we interpret is what mm. the protagonist has been doing and what they're doing means, not only to the protagonist, but the other people with whom they relate. Instead of saying, well, when you were three years old, uh, your mother punished you, you know. No, we don't do that. Uh, you know, what, what, is, what does it mean? Um, we stick to the, what we have seen the protagonist do. We can interpret later on and see what that action means. Mm -hmm. But what guides us is the action and the interaction. That's what we in interpret if it has to be, for instance, if I see a 16-year-old hitting everybody, and you know, then I would get to say, well, what, what is this hitting about? Or what, what do you expect to get from it? Mm -hmm. But to just interpret what the therapist thinks you're feeling or doing isn't enough. You have to start feeling and thinking what you're doing. Yeah. And the interpretation can come from that. And the therapist may be wrong and has to listen to the protagonist. Mm -hmm. Rule number 10, even when interpretation is given, action is primary. There can be no interpretation without previous action. That's what I just talked about. Rule number 11. You can say, for instance, since the last session, if I may refer to the last uh -huh. session, I noticed your back is straight, more straight. Mm -hmm. You look me in the face more easily. Mm -hmm. I, is it just a, an example or you just are, you example. mean? This is just a, an example I give of a protect. Uh -huh. you, you are not referring to no, me, no, Serge? No, uh, okay. I'm referring to someone who's always sitting like this, looking mm -hmm. up, and then the next time they are, they're more available. And you can you say, you know, it's wonderful the way you straightened out today. Do you know how your body was last, last week? It was like this. Do you remember that? No. You weren't aware of it, maybe. But now look at the way you're facing me now. We're much more on equal, to equal terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, rule 11, we have, we have 15, so we are almost there. Yeah. Warming up to psychodrama may proceed differently from culture to culture, and appropriate changes in the application of the method have to be made. Yeah. For instance, if one goes to Africa, mm -hmm. you might start from yeah. drumming. For dancing. Absolutely. Or a community meeting. Mm -hmm. You have to adapt and you have to be respectful of the indigenous culture. Moreno always specified, train the indigenous leaders. Don't come like a, I bring the light of the world to you. That's, that's not the way to work. Find the leaders of the community that can use these methods. Indigenous leaders. Strange leaders are not the best. Mm -hmm. That's also part of respecting the culture. Yeah. Because what? if you if you'd say, well, Moreno did always did this in a place where it doesn't fit, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You have to feel your way in. For instance, I found out that in certain cultures, we sometimes introduced a family photograph and enacted it. In certain cultures, 
they wouldn't produce a family photograph. It's too personal. Yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. Take a school photograph. Yeah. Uh, rule number 12, psychodrama sessions consist of three portions, the warm-up, the action portion, and the post-action sharing by the group. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this is basic. That's clear, right? Yeah, that's itself. That way the sharing is not analyzed. It is not, I saw you saying this and this. No. It's the director statement. In what way did what so and so did have an echo in your life mm -hmm. and in your heart? How do you did you identify where and when did you identify with this? Most of the time, I have rarely felt found found someone who doesn't share with one or another thing. If they don't want to share, that's their that's their business. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it. The protectors had been taken out of the group physically for a while, and now it's being re and emotionally now being reintegrated physically and emotionally back into the group. Mm -hmm. So and that is really the the verbal aspect of group psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And sharing is also a way of expressing solidarity to the the protagonist, so she or he are not uh, uh, alone after being exposed uh, because so there is some exposure. The protagonist has made themselves naked. And the only way to pay, it's a form of love. And the only way to pay for that is with love. Mm -hmm. Love has to beget love. Not intellectual analysis. No, that's distant and cold. Yeah. Um, rule number 13, the protagonist should never be left with the impression that he or she is all alone with this type of problem in the group. Yeah. Yeah, this is what we mentioned. But I just, uh, yes, yeah. but I want to highlight that. Moreno had a little boy brought to him who had just come from home to boarding school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Connie has just now she realized that we are we are registering. Well, I'm not sure that we are. Let let me let me check here. I think that we are, yeah. Well, no, uh, that that's fine. It's okay. it's. I um, think it's working. And this little boy had stolen something from one of the other children, and Moreno began to share with him that he had stolen something when he was a little boy. And then he asked people in the group if they had ever stolen anything, any little thing. And I know I stole something, and I told her. <laughs> what have you done, Becca? Well, when you were... read it in my book. What impressed me was that Moreno put himself first as the first culprit. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask the group yet. He said, well, you know, in fact, if I remember, the little boy had stolen a pen and pencil set on Moreno's desk. And Moreno said, you can keep the pen and pencil. He didn't take it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, exposing himself is a way also of stimulating, warming up other people right. to do the same. Right. Uh, rule number 14. The protagonist must learn to take the role of all these with whom he is meaningfully related to experience those persons in his social atom or her social atom, their relationship to him or to her and to one another. Yeah. To really integrate yourself as a social being, you should have some sense of, who am I facing when, when my mother's angry? How would my father relate to that? That doesn't all be done at the same time. It may mm -hmm. have to be done in steps. And but for instance, for instance, uh, I I should be able not only to play myself, uh, playing marbles, I but I should also be able to to do. Uh, uh, well, now I am Zazinho, and uh, I'm I'm I am the teacher, the one who uh, teaches, uh, teaches uh, Sergio how to play marbles. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm seven years old. I'm, 
I'm quite clever also, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sure you are. Do you love do you love Sergio? Yes, very much. We get very much uh, together, we play marbles, we we go to the streets, you know, I do some shoe shining, oh, and right. uh, Sergio is also trying to do some. He's not good, is he? Not as well, good not as good as I am, but he will improve, I, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Tell me, are you closer to him right now than any of his brothers? I, I feel myself very close to him. Uh, I have to, to ask him uh, about that, uh, yes. uh, but uh, I feel very close, very close. Uh, you know, he has just one uh, uh, little brother, Paolo, and uh, we are very close, but uh, Sergio is my very good friend. Good. Thank, thank you for coming today. Well, uh, uh, so let, that, that was the, the, the rule number uh, uh, 14. The protagonist must learn to take the role of all, all what, these... Uh, what was it like for you, now to take his, the friend's role? It was, uh, a, I felt very well, because uh, it took me a long time uh, before uh, meeting uh, my friend, my old friend again. Oh, good. So I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very, very, very happy about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, the final, uh, 15th uh, rule, the director must trust the psychodrama method as the final arbiter and guide in the therapeutic process. One could say in the pedagogical process also, not only therapeutic. Right. You have to feel that this is the best method you can work with. If you don't believe in it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's very delicate and has enormous consequences. So either if you don't trust it and don't feel you're doing it to the to your own satisfaction or the satisfaction of your, your protagonist, it's contraindicated. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Zerka, what I, I found interesting also is in the same uh, 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 monograph, uh, you had also these. Uh, uh, list of techniques. Who, who wrote this text? It was Moreno who wrote the 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 no, yes. No, I wrote uh, no, you 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 did it. I wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moreno. When I said it was Moreno, you you are also Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> the female Moreno. So you did that uh, yeah. uh, this this text. So you. He, he just suggested one day it would be nice to have some kind of summary, and that's all. So I did it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the techniques now, uh, talking about the techniques, the first one is soliloquy. Yeah. So, if I understand well, in the soliloquy thing, I am uh, Sergio, I, uh, have, I am six years old, and uh, I uh, just wanted to tell you how happy I am uh, uh, being together with Zazino again. That's not necessarily it. Ah. You, you, that's not necessarily totally. Uh, imagine you're playing out marbles. Mm -hmm. and, and your friend is teaching you. You're not speaking to him because you want to learn. But your soliloquy is, he's so much better at this than I am. Am I ever going to be as good as he is? Or whatever. You understand? Mm -hmm. So myself talking about that. Yourself uh, talking about what you're experiencing. Uh -huh. Sometimes a soliloquy is you're sitting in front of a boss and he's being very bossy. And not you, but I'm an a person. Uh, and, and you feel, oh, this man is such a bore. He keeps telling me the same thing. I never learn anything new from him. And he treats me like I'm a nincompoop, you know? That's the soliloquy. He treats me as if I'm worthy his consideration. You can't do that in the scene, but you can do it in the second. Yeah, and uh, I'm speaking with myself right. as, uh, uh, as if I was alone. Right. Then there is. Remember the Hamlet, the famous soliloquy. Yeah. If anybody ever remembers anything about Hamlet, it's his famous soliloquy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
The second technique is what you call the therapeutic soliloquy. Therapeutic soliloquy is, I'm really better at this than I thought I was. I'm really better at my job than my boss thinks I am. I'm good at my work. Mm -hmm. I have to let him see that I'm good at my work. You know what? Since I started playing marbles, I am pretty surprised how much I have improved on doing that. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, technique number three, self-presentation. Well, you already did that. Yes. It's already uh, uh, so the, the one I started I, I doing... I so, so, so many years old, I am playing with my friend and I'm doing such and such. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah. Then the fourth one is self-realization. Yeah, that's in, for instance, let's say that this was not a good relationship not this particular one, or, mm -hmm. something, or anyone. Mm -hmm. And you realize that you really don't enjoy being with that person. I don't really know if I want to be with that person. I have to think about this for myself. Maybe, you know, I have another friend. I think I'm going to spend more time with the other one. Mm -hmm. I'm worthy of, better, of a better relationship. The other thing is a situation that has never happened, but that you desire to have happened. It's also a form of self -realization. I wish I had talked to my brother on the phone before the old people who all became so angry at me. I wish I had written that letter I was planning to write it and, and didn't. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can do it right there. Yeah. And then there is the fifth, which is quite uh, uh, impressive. Hallucinatory psychodrama. What? what? Hallucinatory. I don't know if Hallucinatory. I'm... Oh, that's mental patients. What they are hallucinating. And you will read about that in my book too. Uh -huh. I'm going to produce that. Okay. So this is something that it's has something to do that we used with, with, with mental uh, illness. The, the emotional, uh, an hallucinatory content. Yeah. You'll mm -hmm. read that in my book. Then we have the double. Technique. Ah, that's a, you know, the double has been a shadow figure in many, in much literature. Dostoevsky wrote a beautiful short story on mm -hmm. the double that everybody should read. But it was a double that turned against the protagonist. In psychodrama, the double enhances the protagonist. For instance, you're standing, ne I'm standing next to this person and I'm feeling, oh, I'm so sad and I can't tell anybody. My boyfriend just left me and I feel awful. Mm -hmm. And she may say, how did you know that? Yeah. For instance, if I, if I go and I say, well, I wonder if uh, uh, I'm being uh, as clear as I always wanted to be yeah. when I speak to this gentleman, to this uh, Sergio. Yeah. It, Usually, I was taught that you are actually next to the protagonist, sit the same way, stand the same way, mm -hmm. not not as a voice of conscience behind uh -huh. a, a real yeah. double. And sometimes we use silent doubles with people to make them feel comfortable. I remember we did a dream with a girl, and the dream ended, and my husband went into another scene, and she said, give me back my double. She felt supported. Mm -hmm. It's like enlarging yourself in every way and feeling comforted by yourself mm -hmm. and challenged. Well, I didn't do that very well, did I? No, I didn't. I'll try better next time. That was, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and then we have multiple double. Yes, we did that with one one very mute catatonic patient. One was her, was her arms and her grim face. Another one, I was her voice. She was mute. And I screamed for her. And you know that at the next session, when we're in the next session, she screamed. She had been mute all the time. You'll see that in my book. Uh -huh. Then mirror. What? The mirror. mirror. Ah, yeah. Well, my sister, for example, wouldn't. Uh, admit that she was a mental patient 
and didn't want treatment, just needed a rest. So Moreno built what he called a mirror sacrifice, based on some of the history I'd given him. And he constructed the family scene in which she was uh, not being sick, mm -hmm. but uh, arguing with my parents. And she sat there and watched. She was amazed that somebody would have the temerity to, to play her role. And she got up on the stage. She said, that's very nice, thank you. That's not the way it was. Let me show you. That was exactly what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And we've done mirror sacrodonas for a lot of patients who couldn't or didn't want to commit themselves to the stage. Yeah. A mirror, but you situation? don't do it to shame them. You do it to help them open up. Yeah. For instance, a situation where someone could come and play like I was playing uh, uh, as a child playing marbles, and then I would be sitting there and looking at this situation. With the two together. Yes. And there's a certain Outside point. Situation. At a certain point, I could come and say, "Look, it, this is not exactly Correct. how I am doing. Uh, the, the way I'm doing is like this, yeah, and I'm right. smiling. I'm not. Uh, I'm not unhappy. Uh, unhappy." Good. Then we have role reversal. Well, you already did it. I did it with with my 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 close friend. Yeah. And then, that's very significant. If you can even emotionally role reverse with an opponent. I mean, this was a pleasant role reversal. Sometimes you have unpleasant ones, but you have to learn the point of the mental view of this other person in order to understand how to get along, or to decide not to get along, and it's perfectly all right. Mm -hmm. So, no, I can't deal with that person. I'm not going to bother. And the fact that I am not able to, to role reverse with, with someone means that the, I'm not uh, able to solve the conflict with this person. Yes, it's a blockage. Yeah. It is. Now, however, uh, somebody asked me that, is that a sociometric position? I said, no. It could very well be that the protagonist had not yet worked through the conflict with this person separately from this person. Because I knew one woman said, I can't be my mother. I said, I see that. And I didn't force her. Mm -hmm. She wasn't ready. You have to, there has to be a certain readiness, openness to be able to do that. But you don't force her. That's, that's a clinical observation you make. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, another technique called the future projection. Ah, yes. Here I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in England, and I'm talking, uh, and I'm preparing to go to America. And I have in my mind an idea. I'm offered a job, and I take the job, but really I'm not pleased with what the job is going to mean in the long run. Fortunately, I don't go. But my projection is, if I go there, I'm going to be on the west coast of America, when all my relatives are on the east coast. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can do that. Or I can say, well, here we are, 2016, right. and I am now back to Brazil. Correct. So, voila. Uh, yeah. Then we have... It also means to prepare for it, then, if you it's a way of preparing uh, ourselves for something. So we, we put ourselves in or, a future or, um, situation. I, or I know that my mother is dying. I have to make up my mind. Am I going to go and see her in England or do I stay here? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we have dream presentation. Yeah, that's fascinating. You will see a dream friend presentation in a film that was made in 1963 63, in Paris, or doing a dream. He didn't uh, finish it up because the, the film ran out. But it was a presentation of a wife, in fact, a like a future projection, mm -hmm. in the, within the dream. It was actually a nightmare. She gets lost. And um, the last thing he did was well, you're home now, safe with your mother, and I play her mother. Wait, she's waking up, and I say, she tells she had a terrible dream, so you had a call up. To our cauchemar, and that's how we finished it. Actually, 
It was a predictive dream. She could not come to America because of that dream. Mm -hmm. Her husband was American, he wanted to come back here. That dream held her back. Mm -hmm. The dream was of being lost. Was it about a, a couple? Uh, she was French. The guy was in, in, in an American in, yeah. in France. They yeah. were not going very well together. He wanted to come back. She he was went, reluctant. He came back ten years later to the Institute in New York. Uh -huh. One of my students directed the session and he reported that that session made it clear to him that his marriage was hopeless. He divorced and married again. His mother lived just down the road, down on the block. Uh -huh. So this was a combination of future projection, yep. dream presentation. Yep. And then we have uh, retraining of the dream. No, actually, the dream was not it was a future projection within the dream. Uh -huh. Within the dream. Yeah. Fine. And then you have what? The retraining of the dream. Ah, yeah. With the retraining. That Moreno said, there's some dream. He didn't do it because I said we ran out of film. Mm -hmm. But normally what he would have done would have said, you can change the dream any way you want. But we actually make them go to sleep. I mean, we like, we like, I used to have a, a mattress. We would have them lie down the way they do at night. Mm -hmm. Is your husband here with you? Is it, are you alone? What time is it? Talk day, night, or day, night is it? What's the room? I'm not going to have that, the room light. And just take the position you had when you fell asleep. And then the moment the dream comes, you make them get up. Mm -hmm. And they go put it to the dream. But it's bodily into the sleep position of the sleeper. The position of the sleeper is different from, from reliving a dream. You start by lying down and sleeping. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. And then we have doing it is this is a painful situation. Let's redo it. In other words, the dream doesn't concentrate, doesn't doesn't uh, work on you. You work on the dream. Mm -hmm. You can change it any way you want to make it more to, to find some solution to this problem. Yeah, and then we have the thirteenth technique called therapeutic community. What about yes. that? That's when people get together for this, uh, like uh, drug, treatment of drug addicts or any kind of addiction. They are separate from the community, from the from the community, taken as a special residential community. That's how we treated uh, drug addicts in uh -huh. the 80s, 80s and 90s, especially in, in Italy. I worked with therapeutic communities. But the whole purpose there was to get well. Mm -hmm. That was the focus of attention. And to get these people back to life without the drugs. Yeah. Talking about running out of the film, let me check if uh, we are not running out. Let me see. Uh, well, I think that we still have some time, but, uh, 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 yeah, a, a, a number, of, uh, a so few minutes the more. the therapeutic community is <coughs> not a work community, although they may have to work. The, the purpose of the community is to leave that old life behind, mm -hmm. it's not a new life. And we use all the methods we have with the group members to integrate them. Let me let me uh, take the camera a little bit closer, uh, uh, so to change a little bit because up to now it was uh, almost everything in the same position. Uh, this is a homemade thing, so there's no problem. But final, the final part of it, uh, 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 Zerka, there is something that you call adjunctive methods. Adjunctive. Ad adjunctive methods. What do you mean by ad ad um, adjunctive? Art, art, dancing, music, art, those are all adjunctive methods. Ad ad adjunctive okay. methods. E e uh, you can even use the uh, dream figures uh, for the art, in art, for uh -huh. instance. Or uh, le let me see uh, how what your world was like in a drawing or in a sculpture or all this. Yeah? But, and you, you mentioned six, the f you started with uh, hip, hypnodrama. Yeah, hip, that's doing psychodrama under the, process, on, in, under the, hip, in the hypnotic process. I was hypnotized 
once because I was I was working on my phantom limb. Uh huh. And I saw for the first time my phantom limb from hypnosis. Visually saw it. So then you do psychodrama while in that state. Mm hmm Well then you have psychodramatic shock. Yes, oh. my husband did that with um with a, uh, a patient who was being um, very wild and he stopped her that's kind of a shock he stopped her and he said no you've been doing this now for weeks you can't do this anymore so he shocked her out of it out of that wild hallucinatory phase uh -huh. because she had been worked on it for weeks he said no that's no longer relevant stop and there is also a psychodramatic shock therapy report in one of the early journals of sociometry, mm -hmm. how he worked with the patient on shock therapy. And it's also ch challenging them to change their behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, then we have a third... Uh, well, I'll tell you how I did psychodramatic shock. <coughs> There's a young man, a psychologist, who brings his younger brother to me because he's a terrible problem. He lives with his parents, but the fact is that his parents are aging and they're moving from New York to Florida. Mm -hmm. They've sold their house in which the, young, the younger brother lives, who's very dependent, and they are moving in two weeks to Florida. And he has refused to find another place for himself. So I said, all right, I understand. It's now two weeks from now, your parents have gone. You're standing on the street with your suitcase. Where are you going to go? <laughs> yeah. work, you haven't worked? It shocked him into the realization he has to do it. But it was shock therapy in a gentle way. But realistically, they're not here anymore. You have to think of doing something for yourself. Mm -hmm. You take the, 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 the person by surprise by presenting something that is but unexpected. You, you intensify the experience in a way that they're not able to do themselves in order they can mm -hmm. see what they're doing to themselves. Yeah. Then we have improvisation for personality assessment. Personality assessment. Yes, um, you, this means a young man is going to, is looking for a job. And he is, it's his first job and he's very nervous. So we improvise the scene to make him feel that he can manage it. Mm -hmm. And also, we do that also with assessment. I mean, you have some people who are di who, who are d difficult to deal with in your world, and you think, how can I assess their personality? Now, psychodramist could help you with that. Then, didactic psychodrama and role playing. Yes, that's an educational form, obviously. Yeah, yeah. using role play. Um, you're the student. You're the teacher. Uh, this is the context of the of the of the, of the confrontation. That's it. And it may not be a real a real one, mm -hmm. but it may be something that the whole group has experienced at one time or another. Yeah. And now let's reverse. Then mm -hmm. you are no longer their student. You are the teacher, right. and uh, you take that role. Yeah. Fine. It's taking role other than the self, but it's reality based. Then there is something here: psychodrama combined with narcosynthesis. LSD, oh, etc. Yes, that's the, using the various drugs. Actually, it doesn't work. Didn't work with LSD. Narcosynthesis is when they used to put people under under medication. Mm -hmm. We had a uh, insulin shock. Actually, we found that the more medication you use, the worse it is. The less the psychodrama you can use. Mm -hmm. But there were some people who were trying to do that. And then finally, from your list, you have this family psychodrama and family therapy. Yeah. Well, you, you <coughs> saw you saw the, the the article I showed you. Mm -hmm. um, time, reality, space, reality, and the family. We worked with an entire family. I think you, if you are interested in that, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Working think, with I family. Think, I think it's in in, in my book. Yeah. In the last book, there's uh, uh, the quintessential circle. Yes. It's in there. Yeah. Yeah. But people don't know. No. People who are. Right. <laughs>
No, well, very uh, interesting to welcome the uh -huh. whole family. But from all these, uh, Zerka, uh, uh, now it was, this paper was, uh, uh, came in, uh, well, at least here, 1982. I'm assuming that this uh, was written uh, before. But uh, do you... It do was you written before. That book is, what, what date is that book? The, this book uh, is, uh, uh, was done in uh, copyright 1964. Okay. Uh, uh, so it was done in 64. Yeah. And then uh, how many copies? Sorry, 69. 69. Uh, 69. And how does it say there on the, on the, on the monograph? Uh, well, the, the, the date of, of, of printing was 82. So that was later. Yeah. But uh, uh, is there any update that uh, you think that no, it's... No, I haven't it, updated it. No, but do, do you think that uh, there is something really new oh, if that... I did it uh, now, I would write it, just, uh, write it probably differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Use some of the same ideas, but describe them differently. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. Uh, uh, so, uh, to end uh, these, uh, if not yet ended, so how... Uh, we could end that uh, that video. Yeah, on what? How could we end the final part of okay, the video? Okay, well, all, all I can say is I, I'm not assuming you can use all these methods. This is strictly for teaching purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. good.